So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Raimo and I am head of partnerships at the Estonian e-residency team. And we are gathered here to, to have a webinar about the Estonian e-residency. Uh, I will give you a short overview of what the agenda is going to be, and then uh, we, we start off. So uh, first of all, um, our Estonian ambassador in Israel, Mr. Sulevganike, will, uh, will give a short introduction. Then I will uh, give you a short overview of what is e-residency and how it works uh, for those who probably haven't uh, heard of it so much before. And then um, uh, Martin Land from e-residency hub is going to talk about uh, how to start a company in Estonia by using e-residency, what to consider, what are the benefits, uh, what are the obligations and so on. And then we are extremely happy that um, Oliver, one of our e-residents also joined us uh, to give you the, the practical view of how does this actually work in, uh, in reality. Uh, so this is basically the agenda in general. We encourage you to ask questions as well. Please do that uh, by adding them to Q&A uh, section, which you can see on the bottom of the screen. Uh, there are diff different uh, small icons. Uh, uh, please do use Q&A for uh, sending the questions. And I'm going to ask them uh, from the presenters uh, during and uh, after the presentations. Um, you will get the recording of the webinar later as well. It may take a few days uh, to, to edit and uh, to send it for you, but uh, you will get it. You can always visit our website, Marketplace, and uh, of course, uh, e-residency hub is more than happy to help you uh, later as well if you have already more specific questions. Uh, that's all for now, and uh, now I will give the stage to, uh, to our ambassador. Good afternoon, dear participants of the webinar e -resident, Estonian e-residents in Israel, dear organizers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of the embassy uh, in Tel Aviv, I am glad to welcome everybody of you behind your screens here. As many other events, this seminar slash roundtable was initially planned as a physical meeting in this city in Tel Aviv. And uh, as we have a rising number of Estonian e-residents in Israel, and some of them are even Estonia, have even Estonian citizenship. And considering our previous contacts and communications with you, all that convinced the embassy that it is a time for a certain e-residency follow-up event. That is for an event to share more detailed information provided directly from the title. By, the, by our year residency, uh, residency experts, and including, of course, uh, the possibility for a, any participant to attend uh, the relevant Q&A questions and answers session. Every company and every business is different, and certainly every year residency his or hers business interests, questions, and maybe concerns related to the taxation, legal environment in Estonia, or technical and administrative nuances by using Estonian e-services. These are all also different. So despite this COVID-19 situation and related limitations, I am sure that we are carrying out today's webinar in a good business-like manner. I hope that you will get the information and the answers to your questions like you were expecting at the moment you clicked on our Zoom link some moments ago. But before starting, let me also extend my gratitude 
for setting up the webinar to Mr. Martin Lan from the e-residency hub in Tallinn, to our moderator, Mr. Raimo Vatvere, representing the e-residency team also in Tallinn. And uh, of course, Mr. Oliver Kasser, who joined our program, so to say, in the last minute. Thank you. I'm also sending our regards to Mr. Penny Schlick here in Tel Aviv, Manager Director of the Innovation Without Borders, who is a longtime friend of the Embassy and who was a useful supporter to the idea to organize such an event. Thank you all, and it's over to you now, Mr. Matver. Thank you. So, um... As uh, you registered uh, to the event, uh, you uh, were able to uh, to show your uh, interest and uh, and explain us uh, what um, are you already a resident uh, or Estonian company owner or not yet. So uh, there were also people who probably has heard just a little about the residency uh, and haven't applied for that uh, yet. So for those who are more interested in the business formation, uh, then uh, please uh, uh, be patient. Uh, we will go there uh, right away. But uh, first of all, I will give you a short overview of, uh, of e residency as a program and how, how, how one can actually apply uh, for e residency. So Estonian e-residency generally is uh, our government issued uh, digital ID or digital identity uh, that enables uh, e-residents to access our uh, e-government services and the business environment digitally all around the world without visiting uh, Estonia in person. I think it's especially a relevant point uh, in the current COVID-19 situation. but. Uh, the program is open for uh, people all around the world. Uh, the, the idea uh, of the program is uh, to actually uh, facilitate business in general, uh, globally, cross-border, as well as attract uh, also investors, entrepreneurs, um, and startups to think of uh, Estonia as a potential business environment uh, for their company as well. Uh, why do people usually apply for e-residency e or why, why it's worth to consider that? First of all, yes, it is possible to establish and manage an EU company entirely online. Um, the first step would be definitely to become an e-resident, which takes a bit, uh, bit of time uh, as, as uh, there is a certain process. But after that, actually, company formation itself is a, is a matter of few days usually to be opened. Uh, Estonia has a long history already, we can say a long history in digital garments and a uh, huge selection of different e-services that help uh, uh, run company uh, more effectively and uh, with almost zero bureaucracy. I will uh, talk about it a bit uh, later. So uh, it enables, uh, e-residency enables um, um, people also to access those private and, uh, and public e-services. So uh, there is a kind of joke in Estonia that it is not possible to get married, get divorced and buy a real estate in Estonia uh, in, uh, in, uh, using, uh, by using um, e-services. Everything else should be doable uh, by using your digital ID. Uh, then uh, legally sign contracts and other documents as well as encrypt uh, your documentation and send it uh, in a safe way because uh, Estonian uh, e-residency digital infrastructure has the highest possible uh, security level in the EU. So uh, we can say that it's, it's uh, definitely a use case for many of the entrepreneurs. But uh, there is also another uh, not so um, uh, business oriented aspect that uh, is going to be more and more important uh, as the number of e-residents is growing uh, globally. It's uh, an opportunity to join the community of like-minded people. I think uh, Oliver will, uh, will also cover that part a bit later or we can discuss about it later. But uh, 
uh, based on what we have heard from e-residents all around the world, they, they have found new business contacts and new uh, partners and especially important new friends among our other e-residents. And there are also, uh, there is also already NGO, representative NGO that is actually um, created by e-residents uh, to, to uh, facilitate uh, the cooperation and uh, and uh, also like a cultural ties between e-residents and Estonia as a state. So it's, it's a growing community of people who um, mm, are quite often focused on business, but would like to do it in a new, different, uh, effective way, uh, as well as meet nice uh, people. Um, as, it, as said, uh, the main motivation to become an e-resident usually is to run a location independent business. So it means that if you have a small business in, in one of the towns in Israel and all your customers are there and all your operations take place there, then maybe it's, uh, it's not so effective uh, for you to become an e-resident as basically everything takes place in Israel. But as you start uh, doing uh, cross-border uh, business, uh, find new customers uh, in different countries, have a teammates all around the world, so on, then uh, e-residency would be actually a really good tool to creating such a company. Um, quite often, uh, those entrepreneurs are uh, remote entrepreneurs or digital nomads, freelancers all around the world who work for themselves or they have, let's say, like a one-man company. And, uh, and, uh, and then one important aspect as well is that quite often uh, people uh, and companies who are thinking of uh, entering the EU market uh, or Estonian market, which is small though, but still, then, uh, then this would be probably the most affordable and uh, reasonable way to actually opening a legal EU uh, company or business to, to expand your activities there. And what we also are focusing on are investors and large companies who are aiming to invest uh, in something physical in Estonia, whether it's a retail, factory, IT center, moving your startup there or so on. Um, as said, most of the things are done online, so this is the key value of uh, one of the key values of uh, e-residency uh, for a user. Uh, basically, you can do everything, almost everything online. Bureaucracy level uh, is uh, very low. It uh, har you hardly need to print out any paper or to visit the Estonian state offices in person, especially nowadays. Again, it's a good thing. Uh, also, you don't need to hire a local board member there and, and uh, tax declaring, uh, annual reports, uh, all that kind of uh, documentation could be submitted online. Good news is that Estonia and Israel also have double taxation avoidance treaty, which makes uh, it probably uh, easier and uh, more clear how to deal with taxes in case you are, for example, staying physically in Israel and using Estonian company for your crosses for their business or expanding it to Estonia. Um, what we can say about the Estonian business environment, there are two things. First of all, it's quite open to international business. Uh, there are a lot of startups. We have, there are, we have already five unicorns uh, that have uh, studied in Estonia. And then the lively ecosystem of, of startups and, and also like the state uh, support for, for this industry is also really, really significant. So if you are thinking of, uh, of uh, starting or running or expanding your startup uh, in a lively international business environment, then probably Estonia would be actually a very good place to start your, uh, your uh, new journey. And uh, Oliver is, for example, one good example of, uh, of that uh, kind of mindset. Uh, he initially was a resident, but now also have uh, moved his business to Estonia, at least partly. Uh, what else we can say? Uh, we are part of EU. It's uh, trustworthy uh, to, to start your business or to deal with your, um, uh, with your company through Estonia. Uh, for uh, I think now already seven years in a row, Estonia is considered to be a uh, most competitive tax system. 
uh, corruption rate uh, is low and, uh, and ease of doing business uh, level is also quite uh, high. Um, it, it really takes uh, uh, only little time, but at the same time, uh, if we think of, uh, of uh, prices, uh, how, how much it costs to start a company, this is also a very competitive compared to many other uh, uh, jurisdictions uh, in the EU, but also uh, outside of it. Shortly, uh, you are very welcome to visit our website uh, to go through the application process and read more about it. But in general, you need to gather your application documentation. Uh, it may take a bit time to gather all the necessary uh, documents. Uh, then uh, you are welcome to visit our website and um, apply online, uh, pay the state fee, uh, which is uh, 100 euros plus uh, up to 20 or 30, depending on the pick location. Then uh, Estonian police and border guard will do the necessary background check. You may be asked additional questions. Uh, the more detailed you are in answering them, the better it is, the more smoother is the process. And once you have uh, actually uh, issued, uh, if, if uh, Estonian police and border guard accepts you and you have been issued an uh, e-residency status, uh, you will get the, your e-residency starting kit, uh, which is uh, mainly um, basically including the, your digital ID card and the reader. Uh, you can collect it uh, in the chosen pickup location. Good news is that we have embassy in Tel Aviv, so the nearest place probably for you is uh, Estonian embassy in Tel Aviv. And then once you have get it, uh, then please install your ID software and basically you are free to go start applying for, uh, for basically uh, you are ready to start your company or do uh, whatever other operations uh, you want to do online. Uh, on the picture, you can see our e-residency starting kit. Um, probably the design is going to change soon a bit, but uh, more or less it, it looks like this. About the consular information, uh, we have also embassy people uh, still here in the, in the webinar. So if you have questions later regarding uh, whether you can go and pick up your card and so on, then they are more than happy to answer you. And yes, the, how big is the community already? We have more than 75,000 uh, e-residents, uh, over 160 countries that are, have created more than 14,000 companies. I can say that there are around 500 Israeli e-residents that have created more than 100 companies so far in Estonia. So yeah, I think it's quite, uh, quite a good number and we are really happy to, to invite you on board as well. So I take his uh, thank you in Estonian. Yeah, there are some links that uh, you can uh, you can visit later if you are more into uh, user stories or the case studies of different e-residents, uh, as well as some uh, practical uh, uh, tips and tricks. Uh, you you could visit our Medium blog. Uh, also see previous webinars and videos uh, from our YouTube channel. Uh, or if you have more specific uh, practical questions already, like how to do or conduct something, then uh, you can always visit our knowledge base, which is on our website. And yes, of course, follow us in, in social media as well, please. So that's uh, all from me now. And uh, I will uh, give the floor to, to Martin now. Um, just a second. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Raimo. Uh, thank you very much for the in introduction. And also from my side, uh, Shalom Israel. Thank you very much all for coming. Um, and uh, a big thank you also to the embassy for, for hosting us and, and setting this event up. I think it's, uh, I hope it's going to be useful uh, for, for everybody. My name is Martin Lan. I'm, I'm from a company called E-Residency Hub. And we are uh, one of the companies who uh, provides services for, for e-residents. That means if you have become an e-resident and if once you have received your uh, digital uh, identification kit, as Raimo mentioned, you'll be able to, to sign digital documents. And uh, one of the most common uses for these signatures and this kit is the fact that you can set up 
a company in Estonia and you can do this remotely uh, and, and uh, operate this also remotely. So this is one of the main reasons why uh, people uh, get e-residency and one of the main things that they, they do, uh, practical things that they do once the e-residency has been given to them. A couple of words about uh, my company. So e-residency hub has now been in business almost three years. We joined the e-residency marketplace, which is a kind of a collection of different uh, service providers in the um, first half of, of uh, 2018. And uh, as of today, we have a little bit less than 900 uh, paying customers. So that means there are about 900 e-residents who have uh, trusted uh, the accounting services and business address services uh, to us. So, so we, we, we have a, a lively business ongoing. And uh, the main uh, services that we, we provide, as I mentioned, are accounting services, as well as a legal address. But let me share you my screen. Uh, and I will also uh, I've prepared some slides, which will will make my presentation hopefully more interesting. So what I wanted to talk to you about was was the practicalities of, of running your business remotely. How does it work? What you need to do? And obviously afterwards, we'll I'll be more than happy to take uh, questions and answers. But uh, getting started. So as I mentioned, once you have the card, uh, if you have an internet connection and the computer, which this being the, the, the third decade of the 21st century, everybody does, you can establish the company online. You can do it uh, through our website. Uh, the whole process takes about 15 minutes to fill in the data. It's, it's not very complicated. The cost for setting up the company is 220 euros, and that already includes the state fee. So, so that's, that's the price that you have to pay. Yes, Estonian companies do have an obligatory, uh, there is a, a, a share capital, minimum size of the share capital is 2,500 euros. However, uh, you don't have to pay that share capital in, in the beginning. So it's, it's, it's rather straightforward to get everything started. And just jumping ahead a bit, you do have to pay the share capital in before you are going to take dividends out of the company. But you know, given the way your business goes, this might be sometime further in the future. So, so you don't have to make big upfront investment to start the company. And then all the documents can be designed digitally. And, and most of the time, the process of, of, of setting up the company by the business registry takes no more than two or three business days. We often see companies being established less than 24 hours from the moment that all the documents have been submitted. Uh, I will share with you, I, I'll, I'll show you how it's practically done uh, uh, with the example of, of our website. Um, so um, our website looks like this. So e-residency hub and the, the, the domain name is erhub.ee. I'll, I'll, I'll put it later on the screen further. But if you come to our website, then on the top right hand side, there is a button which says start a company. So basically you click that button. And the first thing that you then obviously have to do is you have to select the name for your company. And this uh, application here, it is uh, integrated or connected through an API with the Estonian business registry. So for example, if you want to establish a company called Coca-Cola, um, you might want to try that, but if you if you do that, then the system will automatically tell you that, you know, too late, pal, uh, done already uh, by someone else, uh, and you, you cannot proceed with that particular name, uh, but you have to try another name. So then let's say you select something else. Let's say you go Israel Trading uh, Enterprise. Price. I have no idea if such company exists. Let's see, check availability. Okay, so it does say that there are a bunch of companies that are called something, something enterprise, but that does not necessarily have to discourage you. You can scroll down and uh, you can continue uh, to sign up anyways. Just a comment. So in case your name that you choose still gets rejected later on, 
it's no big deal. You can always just change the name and, and try again. Usually, I don't know, adding uh, some words uh, will help. Let's say you add a word international or you, you change a couple of words here and there. Uh, and at the end, it does go through and it does not cause any additional costs. So once you have selected a name, then you have a form which looks, which looks something like this. You know your usual stuff, your name, your contact data, everything, members of the board, shareholders. You can have many shareholders, but please bear in mind that if you want to do this online, then all the shareholders have to be e-resident. They have to have e-residency. They can, of course, also be Estonian residents, but, but they have to have the digital identity. And if you want to have shareholders, which are other companies, sort of you want to build a, 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 a consortium where you have the mother company and, and daughters, that's also possible, but unfortunately that has to be done through a notary. We can help you with that as well, but, but let's, not, uh, let's not stop too long on that. But in any case, if your shareholders are one or two or, or, or more, and they're all e-residents, then you can set the company up online. Uh, one more thing, uh, transparency-wise, uh, Raimo mentioned that you know, the e-governance e services of Estonia prefer transparency of, of, of all sorts, then that applies to companies as well. So please bear in mind that company data, meaning uh, the names of the uh, board members, the names of the owners, the address in Israel where you're actually running your business, as well as your uh, annual reports, all your financial data, how much money you're making, will be publicly available. So everybody can have access to that, which also means that you can have access to the, to the business data, uh, annual reports of all Estonian companies. Uh, and you can search by, by names of, of shareholders and names of uh, board members. So, so a lot of this information is publicly available. Uh, this is good to know. And just so uh, it doesn't surprise people at the end of the day. Let me now switch back to my slides. Um, so yes, uh, once the company is established, you know, this is where the real life begins. Setting it up is, 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 is fairly easy. Now the question would be why? Why bother? Why, why would I do this? I mean, I'm living in Israel. Why would I complicate my life by having a, a company in Estonia? Well, there are a couple of things. Um, as I mentioned, the setup costs are, are quite affordable, meaning setting the company up, as I mentioned, is, is 220 euros. You don't need to pay in the share capital in the beginning. And uh, I'll come to that a bit later, but, but accounting and maintenance costs are also, um, I would say, fairly affordable. If we, I mean, Oliver can comment on that later on. If you compare that to Switzerland, then definitely uh, there, is a, there is a price advantage. But the price advantage, I think, is not the most important thing. The most important things are, are this online management uh, capability, meaning you don't have to shuffle between government offices and, and uh, bring a bunch of papers um, anywhere, ever, really, as far as Estonia is concerned. And you can run it from anywhere. So all in all, many of our clients, not all, but many, are people who are so-called digital nomads. So these are people who, um, let's say, manage their business uh, kind of a man backpack and laptop uh, type of lifestyle. So people can be living in Thailand, they can be living in the Caribbean, wherever, and, and they can have their EU company nicely, smoothly running in the background without, uh, without um, too much hassle. Um, the taxation system, Raimo mentioned that Estonian uh, tax system is, is fairly uh, attractive or lucrative. Um, make no mistake, Estonia is not a tax haven. So, 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 so these kinds of uh, schemes and, and, and things uh, uh, are, are, are not something that uh, any of you uh, wants to do uh, and, and these are not possible. Um, however, the corporate income tax system is such that corporate income tax is levied only at the time when you take money out of the company, which means if you are making profit, but you are reinvesting that profit, or you're simply keeping the profit in the company. For example, even if you are trading stocks, you're trading, trading shares, 
uh, if you make profit one year, um, next year you might make a loss. So it would be really a shame if, 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 if the government, the jurisdiction in which you're located would tax your profits during the good years and then leave you kind of uh, in dire straits on the bad years. So in Estonia's case, if you make a profit and you keep the money in the company, uh, the Estonian government does not tax that with corporate income tax. Um, and uh, needless to say, full support that comes together with compliance and, and accounting in Estonia is, is available from companies like ours. So, so we handle the, um, the accounting in the background. Uh, now, uh, moving on. Yes, sorry, I'm jumping back and forth. So uh, what are the services that you get from our company or, or, or any of our competitors, in fact? I, 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 I obviously can mention that. So uh, you are, if you set up the Estonian company, you are required by the Estonian law to have a local uh, legal address and contact point. So, so we serve as that contact point for you. Which also means that if somebody needs to send you paper letters to Estonia, for example, Google, Google, if you set up an account with them, they send the password in a paper copy uh, to the registered address of your company. So what happens is they send them to us, we will scan it, we will send this to you. Uh, also, the same applies for various uh, fintech companies that might want to send you bank cards, uh, credit cards. So they often need to send them to the address where your company is registered. Uh, so if they do, uh, obviously we will forward it to you. Um, the second thing that we do, and which is which is very important, is the uh, is the banking. So we help you uh, to set up a bank uh, or a payment service provider account. I would want to emphasize the word help here. So we are not a bank, nor are we a payment service provider, but we do have a uh, a good co and close cooperation with a company called TransferWise. So uh, opening an account with TransferWise is a good way to get started. We also work with an Israel-based uh, fintech company called Payoneer. Uh, same applies. So you can get a Payoneer account uh, to go with your Estonian company without too much hassle. Again, it can be done online, etc. Um, alternatively, you can, there is a possibility for you to also open a, a bank account in an old school commercial bank in Estonia. We, we work with, with one bank in particular called LHV. Um, however, um, they have a bit more narrow approach to whom they take on as clients. For example, they prefer people who are, as I mentioned, digital nomads or sort of one man bands. Uh, if you are more than that, if you are a bigger company with employees and offices, etc., then they require you to have some sort of connection to Estonia, meaning you either have some staff in Estonia, you have business partners, etc. If you do, you can also get an account with them and they are a, a, a proper uh, old school bank, meaning you get a bunch of other banking services like credits, loans, whatever other uh, services are there. Also, a, a caveat there uh, to get the once you get the bank account, the LHV bank account in Estonia uh, approved, like they say, yes, we will open an account for you. You will have to visit Estonia at least once. And currently, the COVID situation is is is, is rather prohibitive when it comes to that. But um, repeating that again, so uh, opening an account with Transferwise or Payoneer is easy. You can do this online. It takes a I don't know, I would say maximum a week, uh, a couple of days, and you can get a, a bank card, et cetera. You can get your business started. You can make payments. You can receive money from your clients, et cetera. Um, accounting. We, do, we are essentially an accounting firm. So we uh, handle your incoming and outgoing invoices and uh, accounting related to these transactions. We do all the tax reporting uh, and counseling in Estonia. And we also file the annual report for you uh, in Estonia. This is, again, a requirement by the law. So, so you have to do this. You can do this on your own uh, if you prefer, but, um, but you can also ask or hire or con you know, contract us to do these things. Um, now coming to the types of businesses that we support, uh, 
over the years, the, the, the range of businesses that we work with has grown. And uh, still, uh, most of our clients are in the services industry, meaning these are consultants, these are IT developers, programmers, these are people who are selling advertising online. These are creatives like designers, artists, uh, translators, etc. So everybody who is selling Im immaterial stuff, there are people who are selling their own skill or knowledge or experience. So this is a, a particularly good fit with the Estonian e-residency model. But also uh, recently, and not even so recently, over the past year, year or so, we have seen uh, increasing number of companies who are selling physical goods, people who are online sellers. They are, they are selling their goods on Amazon or they have their own website or they use platforms like Etsy or Shopify. Essentially people who buy stuff from China and sell it around the world, um, including the sort of drop shipping model, which, which is becoming increasingly popular. So this is also a type of business which, which it makes sense, it might make sense to run through Estonia. Um, in this case, uh, VAT or value added tax becomes a particularly important issue. And while we uh, mainly or only uh, handle the VAT reporting and filing in Estonia, then we have, we have partners uh, that we can direct you towards and we can help you also with the knowledge about uh, how to go about registering for VAT in, in, in other countries of the EU. That is, if you are using Amazon FBA or fulfillment by Amazon type of services. Uh, so these are the kinds of services and, and a couple of more niches, as I mentioned, investment vehicles, meaning uh, share, investing in shares, trading in shares is something that is possible. Also holding companies. We have seen a number of uh, a residents setting up their Estonian companies as the holdings. So if they have other businesses around the world, these businesses are owned by the Estonian HQ, if you will. And then the profits that they make are, you know, over the time they accumulate in the Estonian entity. This is also a business model which some people use. Um, now let's come, uh, let's go dig into, into even more uh, technicalities, uh, if you don't mind. Um, we have a system called Envoice, which is a digital invoicing tool. So essentially, if you run a business, you have two types of invoices. You have purchase invoices when you buy something, and you have sales invoices when you sell something and, and you expect your clients to pay you. So all of these can be managed in the system. Um, if you have purchase invoicing, meaning you buy something and, and the, the person you buy it from sends you an invoice, then, for example, if that invoice is in a PDF format, it's a PDF file, you simply have an email address to which you forward that invoice. So here on the right, you will see the original PDF invoice and our system automatically digitize, digitalizes that invoice. And it, uh, you know, it extracts the data, like the price, what it is for, uh, the amount, the VAT, etc. And it is then directly sent to the accounting software. Uh, Envoice also works as an archive for your invoices. So if you, if you keep your invoices currently on your laptop or in cloud somewhere, you don't have to do that. You can forward them to Envoice and you can they pretty much delete the, the original if you want. So it works as an archive, which is you can filter, you can, uh, you can search and, and find these invoices. Um, and also your sales invoices, you can create them in the system and, and then you can send them directly to uh, your clients without having to create PDFs, email them, etc. cetera. Uh, so, so this is what Envoice does. Envoice also does expense reports. So Mostly these are travel reports. So if you go on a business trip to, let's say, the United States and you have plane tickets, you have hotels, you have taxi receipts, maybe you have some daily allowances that the Israel uh, law allows you to pay. These can all be summarized in the, in, the, in the travel report. And once you're back, you just click with the click of a button, you submit that report and, and your company can reimburse you. 
Um, moving on, the, comp the Envoy system also has a mobile app. It's both available for uh, in the uh, for, for Apple and and Android phones. And the mobile app works. Uh, the, the idea of the mobile app is that if you have a receipt which is in paper, for example, a taxi driver gives you the receipt, or you go to the corner shop to buy something for your business, like a pen, or or I don't know whatever other things you might buy. Um, you can simply snap a photo of the receipt with your mobile phone and, and that receipt is then also automatically digitized and, and, and transferred to your accounting system. Same applies for travel reports and other invoices in, in sort of hard copy. Now, I mentioned TransferWise earlier. Um, TransferWise also is linked to our invoice system through an API. So what that essentially means is that if you log into your Envoice dashboard, and you have a TransferWise account, you will, of course, see the balance of your TransferWise account. But also, you will see the statement of, of payments, both incoming and outgoing payments that you have made or received to your TransferWise account. And if it is possible, then these payments are linked to the invoices that you have issued. So, for example, if you send, let's say you have a client in the US who has to pay you $10,000. You send them an invoice uh, and you say the invoice number is 27. So you send them the invoice uh, 27 and then they make a payment of this $10,000. And in the explanation comments, they, they say invoice 27. So if this money now arrives on your TransferWise account from invoice, you will automatically see that your invoice number 27 has been paid. So this is, this is the way it, it works. Um, as I mentioned, uh, maybe I didn't mention, but I mention it now, is that if you have a TransferWise account, then TransferWise obviously can also provide you with a bank card. So it's, a, it's a MasterCard, a debit card, meaning you can only use the money that you actually have on your account. But uh, this card um, can then be sent to Estonia to us and we will forward it to you in, in Israel or wherever you might be. And you can use that card to make company related expenses, whether you need to uh, subscribe to some services online or whether you need to buy, a, I don't know, a printer uh, from a local electronics shop or you have to buy plane tickets to go on a business trip, you can use the company card, uh, makes it kind of easier. Um, having said all that, um, this is our um, email address at the bottom, info at earhub.ee. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to. To, to write to us. Um, the way it works is that if you become our client, uh, then you will get a personal accountant. You will get a, we're, we're not that big of a company that we, 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 we become impersonal. We, we give you a person with a name and an email address, and that person can ask you questions if there is something they don't understand, or you can ask them questions. So you have your personal human being on the other side of the line to uh, to uh, to assist you when it comes to accounting i'll also uh share with you um one moment i will show you uh, my our website once again uh, because sometimes people ask you know how much does this stuff cost so i'll show you how much it costs um if you come to our website there is a menu item that is called pricing Okay, so um, we have basically, I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. I, I believe it's visible. So we have four packages at the moment, starting from the cheapest or, or lowest one. Uh, we have the package called Ultra Light, which is, which is for companies that are just getting started. If you don't even have any business yet, but you, you have a, a, a big plan, uh, if you have uh, not started yet, then the package is 10 euros a month. So it's not a lot. 10 euros, all of these prices uh, are without VAT. So Estonian VAT of 20% will be added, but it's, it's 10 euros a month. For that money, you get the legal address, you get the mail forwarding service, uh, and, and yeah, you can have as many shareholders as you like. Uh, if you now actually start business, then you can choose between the, the remaining three packages. And the difference is uh, between the lightweight and standard, one is 59 euros a month and the other one is 75. The difference is the amount of invoices that we will process for you on each month. So when, when it comes to the lightweight package, the amount of invoices 
is 15. And when it comes to standard, then the amount of invoices is 40. Now, if you run a larger operation, uh, be it e-commerce site where you might have hundreds and hundreds of sales transactions per day, then, then that's fine too. We have the e-commerce package where uh, you can have up to 25 purchase invoices and up to 1,500 sales invoices a month. And that package also applies to service uh, software as a service people. So if, you, if you've built a website where you're selling subscriptions, such as, I don't know, Netflix or Spotify are your typical examples of, of somebody pays you, gives you their credit card data and you collect X euros from them each month. Um, if you run this kind of business, then, then we're happy to support you as well. And you can see the website for more details. Um, before I finish, on the website, we also have a bunch of articles. Um, I, I invite you to see one thing. At the bottom of, of the front page, uh, there is a place which says, piece of advice, perfect match for digital nomads. If you click read more, you open one of the articles where we have analyzed which are the types of businesses in which case it makes sense to, to use this e-residency plus Estonian company model. So it works very well for certain types of companies, digital nomads, IT service providers. It may work given certain details for holding companies, investment vehicles, etc. cetera. Uh, and it usually does not work. It doesn't make sense to have uh, e-residency plus company in Estonia model. For example, if you run a localized business in Israel dealing with physical goods, if you have a shop in the streets of Tel Aviv where you're selling shoes or tobacco, then you know the point of having it making this through Estonian entity is, is not very um, um, clear. Um, crypto is another thing. I think I should actually move this crypto to the bottom here because uh, getting crypto licenses in Estonia has uh, over the uh, past year become significantly more complicated and they do require you to have a physical presence in Estonia. So, so if you are a crypto uh, business or you uh, plan to start an uh, initial coin offering or, or any of these things, then then you know there is probably a, a, a place to to think seriously before you do because because the restrictions are quite uh, strict there. Okay, having said all that, I I think I will stop talking. Um, I'll be happy to take questions anytime. There is I'm going to make one more point, Raimo, if you allow me. Um, uh, the point is about taxation. So. Um, Having a company in Estonia, like having a company in Estonia, uh, does not change the fact that you, as e-residents, uh, continue to live somewhere else, presumably Israel. So, if you live in Israel and you are a tax resident of Israel, then any income that you personally make from the Estonian company, whether it is a salary that the Estonian company will pay you or whether it is dividends that you receive from the Estonian company, this income will still be something that you must declare in Israel and which will be subject to any tax uh, taxation in, as, as Israel laws uh, uh, stipulate. So I would, I would also recommend in order to avoid some sort of nasty surprises five, six years down the track to, to, to consult with an Israeli tax advisor and explain to them, look, um, uh, I'm going to set up a, an entity in Estonia. This is the kind of business that this entity will do. Um, and I intend to uh, receive these and these types of, of, of income streams from that Estonian entity. So would you be please so kind as to explain to me what these implications, tax implications for me are when it comes to Israel and, and, and to a certain extent, we're able to, to give you advice as well. And there is some information that you can find on our website about this as well. Not Israel specific, but rather Estonia specific. So uh, you, can, you can make these two, two and two together and, and get the full picture. Thank you from my side. Uh, I think uh, we'll give some floor to Oliver and then later we'll take questions all together, right? I think uh, I'll take some of the questions right away because they are uh, 
tightly connected with your uh, with your right. presentation. Yes, you already uh, told us uh, what's the case with personal taxation. Just to be sure, uh, in which cases uh, e-resident entrepreneur has to pay uh, any any. Uh, taxis regarding uh, employees, management, uh, uh, board members, management, some, uh, and so on. So what are the cases for that? Yes. Okay. Um, so when it comes to salaries, um, it depends on where the person lives, the person who is the worker. It could be yourself. You could, you could also hire yourself to your company. So if you are living outside of Estonia, let's say you're living in Israel or in the US or in Japan or in Germany, then if you receive a salary from the Estonian company, then you do not pay any taxes in Estonia. Uh, but you, you, you declare this as your income from abroad in the country in which you are a tax resident. Um, there is a small caveat there. Estonian law foresees a certain uh, salary, which is called management board member compensation fee if you if if you pay yourself this then yes you are liable you, you pay all the taxes in estonia and now depending on the israel estonia double taxation avoidance treaty uh, estonian income tax rate is 20. so if israel tax rate is higher then the balance you have to pay in israel if the israel tax rate is lower then then there is nothing you pay in israel in addition but this is only the, the, the management board member's fee. Salaries are not taxed in Estonia. That's one. And the other thing is dividends. So uh, I, I always give this example. So if your company has made a million euros of profit, I, I mean, we all wish that, that was the case, but it's a nice round figure. So if you've made a million euros and now you decide, okay, I'm going to cash out and I'm going to sail into the sunset. I see around, uh, Raimo, you have beautiful sunset uh, at your background. So you sail into something like this and uh, you're going to spend this entire million uh, to take dividends out. So at this moment, Estonian government will tax you 20%. So they will take 200,000 as corporate income tax of your company. Uh, and then the remaining 800,000 is your, if you are the only shareholder, this is your personal dividend income, uh, which you then have to declare in Israel. And how much, whether, if, and when Israel government will tax you is something that your Israeli tax advisor can tell you. Great. Uh, some more tax questions, I guess. Um, regarding uh, share capital contribution, uh, the question is the investment 2,500 euros is only needed as a deposit if you wish to give uh, pay out dividends. Are there any other obligation and investment uh, in the in the company? It's not a deposit. So yes. if first of all, you you don't have to pay it in uh, before you pay dividends. So you, you don't have to. But once you do pay it in, it's company asset. You can use this money for company purposes. This money is in no way locked away or 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 sealed. You can use this money. The way it works is this, uh, share capital has to come from shareholders. So if you are, let's say there is a, a man called John and he owns, he fully owns the Estonian company. Now he, he uh, wishes to pay the deposit, the, the, sorry, Freudian slip. Uh, he he um, wishes to pay in the share capital. So then John from his personal bank account, wherever in the world, will make a transfer of 2,500 euros to the company account with TransferWise, then TransferWise will provide them with a very specific document. Uh, and this specific document he gives to his Estonian accountant and the accountant registers that. And then uh, the Estonian business registry will have a note saying the share capital has been paid in. And now this 2,500 euros is in the company bank account and John can use this right away to pay for expenses or invest somewhere or whatever he wants to do. So uh, there are a few questions regarding VAT. I'll try to um, put them together. So first of all, uh, 
uh, in which cases uh, company can register themselves as VAT uh, companies? I mean, uh, what are the, the turnover levels and so on? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the, one of the questions. Mike, okay, um, I'm going to show you something because let me be honest with you, VAT is a super complicated issue and, and uh, it's, it's very hard to give sort of uh, general advice, but I'll, I'll, we have an article about this on our website or a, or a memo uh, of which I'm particularly proud. I, I will show you uh, where to find it. So if you go to our website, uh, Raimo, can you see the website? Yeah? Yes. Okay, so you click FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions. And then you click on the very first question, what is value added tax? You click here and then you see there is uh, our dedicated memo. So you click on the dedicated memo and, and, and you get, do you see that memo now? Mm -hmm. so, so we have a, a six page memo about what VAT is and how you can find it. So uh, please uh, take the time, read that and uh, hopefully it will answer your question. Yes, uh, also I can add that there are some uh, articles regarding uh, VAT in uh, e-residency knowledge base as well. Uh, I think the question uh, was more about um, uh, what's the level of turnover one should have okay. uh, before registering the VAT because there was a, mm -hmm. an example that in Czech Republic you need to have a 1 million euro turnover before you okay. get it. But it's... And, this, and this is why it's complicated. Formally, the, the level is 40,000. The level is 40,000 euros, um, but, and there is a huge but. Um, the but is this, uh, if you are buying any digital services, even if you're buying one single subscription to a Facebook, you, you, bet you pay Facebook for something, or you have, you buy, let's say some sort of, um, you pay Microsoft for OneDrive, for, for cloud space or anything. If you, if you spend one single euro, then you will already be liable for uh, uh, limited VAT. So um, once again, the formal limit is 40,000, but in most cases, like overwhelming majority of cases, we always recommend companies to get the VAT number right away. And the main reason is that if you have a VAT number, then you can offset any purchase VAT that you incur and, and inevitably, I mean, in most cases, people uh, buy something from other EU co companies. If you don't, then yes, if you only deal with companies outside of EU and you don't buy any digital services, then yes, the 40,000 limit applies. But, but please don't get uh, distracted by that. And once again, it, it's mentioned in the memo as well. But, but to, to answer your question, yes, the limit is 40,000 euros per calendar year. Mm -hmm. If you have below that your turnover, then at least formally speaking, you don't have to register for VAT. And the last question before we go to Oliver, um, uh, there was uh, some words about um, e-commerce and Amazon in, in your presentation that there's a question regarding uh, St Stripe and PayPal account uh, <laughs> that want yeah. physical residency in Estonia. Yes. That's a familiar topic for us. Uh, so Raimo, do you want to take that question or should I? You can take it and <laughs> I will uh, okay. add uh, some aspects there. Yes. Payment gateways is an, is an issue. Stripe does not work in Israel. Uh, even if you have a uh, Estonian company, then the uh, Stripe will ask you where you're actually uh, located in. And if you're located in a country which, uh, where, in which Stripe is not active, and unfortunately, at the moment, Israel is such a country, then, then you cannot uh, subscribe to Stripe. If you have a business partner or an employee or somebody that lives in a, in a country which uh, is supported by Stripe, then it, uh, it works. Um, PayPal uh, is a new issue. Uh, and I know it's a stone in, in, in my shoe. And, and I think it's another stone in Raimo's shoe. It bothers us a bit. Uh, the fact is, PayPal was fine for a long time. PayPal, without any problems, opened and opened uh, their accounts for uh, Estonian companies. Um, 
Recently, there have been issues where they have not wanted to do that anymore. And I, I think the Estonian government is in negotiations with PayPal. So at the moment, the reality is this. Getting an account with PayPal depends on which clerk you handles your case uh, on the PayPal side. Because look, PayPal will always ask you for proof of uh, address. Uh, they will need like an electricity bill or something. They will need to see that you are actually located in Estonia and you are not. So uh, we, of course, cannot provide you with some sort of fake uh, identities. So you have to uh, tell them where you're actually located. And then you, you, if you say you're located in Israel, then you can easily, of course, give them a utility bill, electricity bill, phone bill, whatever, from Israel. Now, uh, in many cases, that's sufficient. That's fine. And they will uh, open you the PayPal account. In some cases, they may not, um, and, and currently it's a, it's a gray area. But if you're able to open a, a PayPal account for you as a physical person, then legally speaking, it's also perfectly fine to have your personal PayPal account and use that for company purposes. But please bear in mind that that account should then only be used for company purposes. So you cannot have, you cannot mix up your personal expenses and company expenses so if it's only for business purposes then legally speaking it's fine and, and your customers can make their payments there but there are other payment gateways besides stripe and paypal such as paysera has been increasingly popular uh, without problems so you can use those and you can see the e-residency marketplace there's a specific section i think for fintechs that provide uh payment gateway services so um so that's, uh, that's the thing. And, and, and lastly, um, I think this is an, a, a business opportunity for Israel startups as well to develop a payment gateway and, and find the legal uh, solution to, to, to support the residency because there's a, a massive market. Well, massive is, is a relative size question, but, but there's a, a fairly big market for such services. So uh, always room for improvement. Yeah, I can give you two additional comments. First of all, yes, indeed, I recommend you to, uh, to look our marketplace and, uh, and go to Paysera website to see uh, whether their checkout service could be a good fit for you. It works well. And another thing is, yes, indeed, we are, uh, we are trying to uh, change the situation on the, on the positive direction. Uh, and we are probably also going to onboard additional payment gateway providers to our uh, marketplace. And one more thing, Raimo, if I may add, if you are selling on Amazon, then Amazon is your payment gateway. So, so Amazon really kind of solves that issue. That's good. Okay, thank you, Martin. Maybe we'll have some additional questions later, but uh, Oliver, hello. Hi. <laughs> Do you I want to share to... some uh, presentation as well, or you are just talking your story? I will talk my story. <laughs> so I think that, uh, first of all, I'm founder and uh, CEO of a startup in Estonia called Modulo. We do business process optimization, time tracking and invoicing in a scaled way. A lot of questions turned around why uh, having e-residency and why building a company in Estonia. And that's what I would like to share a little bit uh, out of my experience. I become e-resident because I had an obligation to, because I wanted to create my Estonian company. And being in Switzerland, uh, that's not possible if you have not e-residency. The application for e-residency is very simple. You fill in the form on their website, you wait a couple of days uh, that the background check happens and you have chosen a pickup location. And if everything goes smooth, which was my case, uh, you uh, can go and pick up this kit. So no hustle of this, that goes very, uh, very speedy. Actually, I had something like 30 days, around one month to be approved and to be able to go to Rome to pick up the kit. Then the company creation was even quicker. That was done in one and a half day, yes online form on ER Hub website, filled in, uh, got the approval a day later from Estonian court, 
um, and uh, everything done. But why have I done this? Why did I want to build an Estonian company being in Switzerland? The first main reason is the need of capital in Switzerland. In Switzerland, you need 20,000 euros capital. In Estonia, it's 2,500. In Switzerland, you have to pay in the capital into a bank account, which is blocked until the company is created, and then the money is transferred to your company. But it's way more. It's 10 times more than in Estonia. In Estonia, you don't even need to pay it in. Yes. As uh, Martin told before, as long as you do not take dividends out, you don't need to pay in the capital. That's very important for a young startup, especially if you're bootstrapped, because every money you do not need to spend is a kind of longer runway for your company. The next main reflection is something which is particular to Estonian tax system, which is not the case in Switzerland. It's that you do not pay corporate taxes as long as the money stays in the company. That's very interesting for startups as well. I don't think that a lot of startups starts to pay themselves dividends uh, in the first three to four to five to 10 years. So if you have to pay corporate taxes because you do some benefits, uh, that's money who goes to the, to the government instead of staying in your company to, to be used to develop your company. And in Estonia, that's not the case. You don't pay corporate tax as long as it stays here. The last uh, thing is the ease of administrating the company. For example, we have talked a lot about what, uh, what and what registration. In Switzerland, if you apply for a what number, you have to send in, I don't remember exactly, I think a formula of 23 uh, pages uh, to apply for. And then uh, it takes something like three to four weeks to get approved and uh, that's a long time and in that time you have to wait to uh, issue invoices because you are in this pending state and then to understand how the tax system the VAT system works in Switzerland you ask them uh, how does it work and uh, you wait a couple of days and they send you a box with 300 A4 pages in explaining how the VAT system works. Small anecdote I have done the same procedure in Estonia uh, filled in the form uh, with the help of uh, the accountant. Uh, then was an email coming from Estonian tax authority. Uh, why would you like to uh, uh, apply for Estonian VIT as you do not have this 40K uh, limit uh, achieved yet? I said, I need this because we have to pay some bigger invoices and we would like to handle the tax return in a, in a more optimized way. Uh, then they sent me the what number that was a matter of four hours and to my very big surprise and that's the funny part of the thing is half an hour later i got an email from the estonian tax authority asking me how i was happy with their tax system with their way of helping me and that's something which actually would never ever happen in switzerland nobody asks you if you're happy with the tax authority there we just have to pay yes so the ease of doing all this administrative part, that's a real huge advantage. I'm a startup uh, founder. I do not want to deal with annual reports. I do not want to deal with tax declarations. I want to have that done smoothly. Obviously, I want to know what's happening, yes? But I do not want to process this. I do not want to have a lot of hurdle in sending it in, having missing documents and uh, preparing all this paperwork, which has to be sent with like it is in Switzerland. And all these arguments made me uh, become, uh, first of all, an e-resident and then a company owner in Estonia. And I'm so much happy with this. And also with the open mind in Estonia about startups and businesses, people are really open here. They want to help. And this, this you, you feel this when you come to this uh, country. Uh, I had the chance to enter into an accelerator uh, here in Estonia, which helped me a lot of uh, how to build my company. And that makes me just stay here, yes? So I'm not in fact e-resident anymore. I'm resident now, but if I should go back to uh, Switzerland, then I would turn back to e-resident and it would still go on with the same uh, facility of doing running my company. That was the main arguments why I have done it, yes. What, what is your, um, I, I will ask some question for you. Yes. Um, 
what as you are also quite active part of e residence community in uh, in Estonia and online as well what's your uh, feeling or or expression um, who uh, what kind of entrepreneurs uh, are benefiting the most uh, from from being an e residence or opening their company through e residency what are the the cases that you are especially uh, so surprised of so far? I see actually two types of entrepreneurs. Um, one type is the, the classical SaaS startup founder, whatever star, uh, SaaS it is, uh, that goes from translation service uh, software over to uh, digital insurance products, uh, over to uh, uh, travel organizations, uh, over to uh, business side things like my startup is doing. So the classical startup founder is, is one of, the, of the, the use case. And the other use case I see a lot also is uh, freelancers. Freelancers in graphics, in IT development. Uh, these people are also quite frequently e-residents and they do this uh, because it's easier for them to have a company invoice, uh, VAT declaration in, in, in towards their customer, yes. So these two type of, of um, entrepreneurs uh, are very, very uh, good e-residents or it's very easy for them as e-residents to deal with, with their issues, yes. That's why it benefits most to, to, those, uh, to those two types. Um, I have heard also about a couple of people asking uh, about uh, drop shipping models. I think that's something which is coming more and more. And um, there are some particularities on how to do this with Amazon and so on. But uh, actually, uh, the, the, the web page of e-residency gives you some hints. And Martin is a special in, specialist in setting these up. So uh, if you have questions about that, uh, it's not me, ask, ask uh, Remo and Martin about that. But I think that's a third type of entrepreneur which, which can benefit from e residency. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, during your journey as an e resident, uh, or actually before you became one, how did you educate yourself or what are, in your opinion, the best sources to get uh, like the real life picture? How does the life of e-resident uh, will look like? Because definitely uh, we are here all very enthusiastic uh, regarding e-residency, but, uh, but um, definitely people who are thinking of becoming e-residents would like to see more uh, entrepreneur view or, or a real life view. So which uh, sources of information you recommend them to, to follow or what do definitely, what do they definitely should read uh, or think of before actually applying or starting a company? Yeah, uh, I'm a very harsh uh, guy sometimes in the Facebook group, which is very active. A lot of questions are coming from interested people in the e-residency, the official e-residency Facebook group and also a parallel uh, group. I'm always writing four letters, RFTM, uh, translated read the fucking manual, because a lot of questions are already answered. Uh, mainly on the e-residency uh, webpage, the official one where you have real a lot of information. So especially if you are an entrepreneur or you want to become an entrepreneur, you have to do your homework. So go there, read, and then uh, build yourself an opinion, yes? Then you have some particular questions which no Facebook group can answer you. It's mainly related to tax, uh, tax uh, sorts, tax problems. My advice there is, very simple, read and then take a local tax advisor. Local tax advisor must be somebody which knows Israeli law in this case of the webinar today, but also Estonian laws, Estonian tax laws. If you find this person either in Estonia or in Israel, then that's the real person who can give you answers. Don't trust people uh, which write in Facebook groups. It's simply not true what they write or not 100% true because each case is a little bit different. Each case is individual. So don't ask tax question in Facebook group. That's, that's useless. Yes. The last uh, questions we have in the Facebook groups is banking. 
And there again, uh, please be aware that banking, uh, you have to agree with a bank that she accepts you. And that's in every country the same. So it's useless to discuss banking issues on Facebook groups as well. Main source of information to answer your question, Remo, is the website. Uh, and then uh, asking eventually uh, some practical questions to existing e-residents. And there is a cool group called ERICA, which is the uh, Estonian e-residency chamber of commerce, uh, which is active, has an own web page, is also represented in Facebook. And these people can advise you also with uh, a lot of practical experience. But please, no tax questions to these groups. Ask your tax advisor. That's way better. Good. Um, another honest question. What are probably the biggest, um, let's say, shortcomings of the program or, or the most difficult parts for you to deal with uh, when you are running your company as an e-resident? What makes probably you to uh, spend more time uh, maybe uh, on, on trying to understand the details or, or what are the, the things that the people should consider uh, or what, what may be the, the cases that you need to think of? Uh, in, in, in my situation, the, the, the biggest thing is how do I build my business? But that's not related to e-residency, not related to Estonia, it's general questions. Typically related to e-residency e or to Estonia is as soon as you start to pay salaries, especially if you have Estonian uh, uh, team members uh, to where you pay Estonian uh, salaries, you have to understand how the Estonian system works with social security, with, with uh, tax declaration and so on. For me, that was a kind of... Um, kind of a foggy, foggy thing, which I did not really understand in the beginning because it's different to what I'm used in Switzerland. There are some instruments which helps you and Estonia do, is doing really great. In the International House of Estonia can help you. Settle in Estonia can help you. Uh, there are a lot of trainings available for free, which you just can book and go to. Um, particularly Settle in Estonia has an entrepreneur training, uh, which gives you all these hints. So use that, that, that plentitude of, of information which are around. Uh, you just have to use it and read it. Yes. This is for me, that was for me the most difficult part uh, regarding my relation, my company relation to Estonia. Now also my private relation to Estonia because I'm now here and the taxpayer here. So I had to find out how this, this works a little bit, but it's, it's, special the case if you are in another legislation and you have to understand how the Estonian system works. I mean, your company is there. So uh, you have to, uh, to comply with, with Estonian rules, uh, legal, legal thing and do the things in, in the proper way. But it's not complicated, it's homework. Yes. Good. Um, and what about the availability of uh, information in English? Uh, is it uh, enough for, for you? That was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit afraid about that. I say Estonian is a language I will probably never really learn. Um, although I have done an initial training now, uh, but no, that is not a problem at all. Everything is available in English. And honestly, uh, I have not met an Estonian uh, person until now. I'm a resident since uh, over two years now who does not speak English. Uh, it's it's absolutely no no brainer. Yeah, everybody speaks English, and all the information is available in English. Especially all all the official um, governmental web pages are all translated. And if if you fell on something which you, there is still soft help with Google Translate in, in in worst case scenario, which is not very accurate, but uh, it gives you a hint at least. But it's not a problem. Okay, thank you, Oliver. If someone has any question to Oliver, please add the question to the Q&A. But I will still ask a few questions from Martin. Uh, just to make it uh, clear, the, how big is the corp corporate income tax in Estonia and how it's calculated? Corporate income tax is 20%. And the way it is calculated is uh, as I mentioned, corporate tax, tax is levied when you pay dividend, yeah? So at first, you take the full figure that you want to spend for dividend payments, 
then you take 20% out of that and whatever is left is the net dividend. So once again, with my million euro example, if you decide that you, you're going to spend one million dollars, one million euros, sorry, uh, for dividends, then 200,000 goes as tax and 800,000 goes to the shareholders. Clear. Then uh, there are a couple of questions about pricing. Uh, before I will uh, let you to, to give your view of, of pricing, then uh, uh, there's a question how much the company management in a year costs. Uh, yeah, of course, it depends on, on how active you are and uh, what are the services that you are using. But generally, those very basic, uh, basic services of, um, of legal address and contact person a uh, couple of hundreds of euros to, to 400 euros a year is, uh, is uh, the, mainly the price range uh, for uh, e-residency marketplace uh, member uh, service providers. Uh, and uh, usually they charge for the services in two different, different ways. There are service providers that uh, ask you to pay a yearly fee or, or a half year fee. Uh, and you, you buy uh, separately all the necessary services you want to have and skip all the ones that you don't want to. And the other option is a monthly subscription, like uh, also Martin described, which is uh, also usually including at least uh, some amount of uh, accounting and, and, uh, and some business help in Estonia. And then there's a price level around 50 to 150 euros, again, depending on what, how many services you use and that what's the extent, yeah, per month, of course. Um, and uh, and in a, you can comment on that. And in addition to that, there's a question, how much approximately annual report costs? In our, okay, in our case, if you buy accounting services from us, let's say the 59 euros for the small business and the, 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 the 75 for the bigger one, uh, annual report is included in that price. Uh, if you don't buy any accounting services from us, but you simply uh, resort to this ultralight package, which I mentioned, and the details are on the website, uh, then yes, it's, it's 10 euros a month, well, plus VAT, so 12 per month. And then if you want us to do your annual report, then if you have not had any business at all, zero, you have not bought anything, you have not sold anything, then we do the annual report for 40 euros. But if you have had uh, some business transactions, then it, it then we charge an hourly fee. The hourly fee is, 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 is 50 euros plus VAT. And really depending, your, your annual report could take half an hour, it could take seven hours or 10 hours, depending on how much business you've had. But uh, in most cases, uh, for those clients that, that buy accounting services from us, always the annual report is included. So, so um, but if you have more detailed questions about pricing, then, then feel free to, uh, to write to us and we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you. But I hope, I would like to hope that the website is, is quite informative. So as Oliver mentioned, take a look, uh, see what the comments and, and the, the lists are there. And, and if you have further questions, do let us know. Yes, uh, I think the general price level also starts from the from from 35, 40 euros uh, uh, for the company that did not do any any business uh, transactions, and uh, it grows from there from I don't know 75, 100 euros a, a year or or even more depending on how active you are. Uh, just uh, to to wrap it up. Uh, once you have decided that you would like to become an e-resident and also uh, start a Estonian company, then I would definitely recommend you to visit our e-residency marketplace. Martin and the e-residency hub is there, many other service providers there as well, uh, also providing uh, similar services, uh, contact person, legal address, accounting, uh, but also our fintech and banking partners are there. Uh, tax and legal consulting companies uh, in case you are planning to establish a more complex company or you would like to issue uh, a license for a specific um, business field. For example, if you are planning to, uh, to start providing financial services or 
tours, for example, or dealing with food production, you need a special li license from Estonian, um, Estonian authorities. So for, for that, uh, you may need some legal help as well. Uh, if you are thinking of uh, who to choose, whether to, to choose the, uh, the cheapest one or the one that, uh, that has the broadest uh, selection of services or, or based on some other criteria, uh, I recommend you to think of, first of all, uh, how independent you feel you are or you, how independent you want to be. So would you like to do your accounting by yourself, add the tax declarations, uh, and only use uh, as little help as possible, or you'd like to have like uh, full full service, where a service provider is there to help you basically on a daily basis. And the second thing is, I always recommend you to think of at least one year, maybe even two years in advance, so that uh, if you think now that okay, I I will register the company, but I don't know when the actually business will start or when do I start invoicing my customers, uh, then probably you, it would make sense uh, to, to spend less in the beginning, but think of, uh, think of one or two years in advance, what kind of services you may need them, and maybe also consider that when, uh, when choosing a service provider. Uh, can, last... I make a, can I make a comment here? Yes, sure. Uh, we are all talking about establishing a company, but but sometimes things don't go as planned. And, and if you in the future want to close the company. So I just wanted to mention that that is, of course, also possible. Uh, it is not as fast as setting it up. Uh, and I can put a link. You can read about how the company dissolution can be handled. Just a couple of words. So the process takes about six months. Uh, but most of the time is simply waiting because you have to publish some information on the official gazette and then simply wait, uh, you know, for potential creditors to to appear uh, if you have any if they have any claims against you. If not, then then again, it's it's a procedural matter. You can do it yourself, but if you want to ask your accountant to do it, then all the service providers, including us, we we offer that service as well. So uh, so you are not uh, somehow tied to that company forever. If you, if you decide that you want to get rid of it, then there is a, a formal procedure of, of liquidating a company. And I'll, I'll, I will add the link to that uh, in the chat, just in case. And of course, it's fair to say that uh, you, if you are uh, for some reason not satisfied with the service provider, you can always change it. So you just, you are not tied to one service provider until you are going to de dissolve your company. But of course, uh, the more pre-preparation work you do and, and the better match you, you will have with your service provider, then the more smooth is the process, definitely. So I think we are going to wrap up the webinar. I have a last question to Lina, uh, who is uh, working in an embassy. What's the current situation uh, in handing out uh, e-residency cards and what's the future looks like based on the information you have? You are, oh, sorry, you are muted. Uh, I will unmute you. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Hello from my side as well. So I'm a deputy head of Estonian Embassy here and uh, also working as a part-time consular officer and uh, help the e-residency as much as possible. So all, uh, all those who have been already ordered cards or have probably received the information that uh, please come to pick up the card. We are uh, receiving clients. Um, hopefully there will be no lockdown uh, in 4C, but never know. So uh, there is always online registration available for our website. So please register your time for pickup service. Or if you have some consultation in mind, um, you can always send us also the email. We are trying to, um, to put you together with the information that you need if you are not able to find it Im immediately yourself. But uh, as, as was mentioned, there are a lot of sources. So use those uh, Googling uh, skills or go directly to the e-residency but, um, portal, you will find a lot of information already there. And um, we are, uh, there will be a little short break uh, during the Christmas, so don't hesitate. But usually the application, uh, when the application is given in and the card will receive, it's probably 30 days, so more or less. 
So if you order to your card today, so we are ready to issue it as soon as it arrives here. So. Thank you, Lina. So uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, as said in the beginning, uh, the recording will be available in a few days. We will send you an email about it as well with uh, some additional useful links. So, so I hope that you got inspired of, uh, of the stories you heard here. And uh, if you are interested in becoming an e-resident and starting your EU company, feel free to visit uh, our website and read more, more about it. As Oliver also mentioned, there's a Facebook group called the e-residents of Estonia, where you can see the different discussions and, uh, and follow our, uh, our uh, announcements also in, um, in our social media channels. So oh, thank you all for joining and uh, have a nice evening. Thanks and happy Hanukkah.